I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. In our last video in the Windows Virtual Desktop series, we covered the deployment of a new environment. So let's take a look quickly just to refresh everyone where we're at. All right, and from our last video, if you saw it on deployments, you'll recognize this script. Uh, we used it to build out our environment. What I've done now is I've taken the idea of this and I started working on creating a PowerShell module. So this will be available in my GitHub and the link is in the description below. But basically I was thinking about this, how can we make everybody's lives a little bit easier? So when you go to set up that new environment, there's a bunch of prereq steps that you've got to complete, like the PowerShell module. And for those of you who don't remember where that is in the docs, under the reference section, PowerShell, here's where you can download the PowerShell module in its current form. So that was a prereq. The other thing is once you had that module downloaded, then you had to install that module, log on to the RDS environment. So I took a lot of those prereq steps and I crafted those into the begin section of my function. And then in the process, this much looks like uh, the script that you already saw. It's gonna stand up the environment. So I've made a function out of that. So this one, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about here, and that is to set the load balancer type. Now, what is this and why does it matter? So back in the docs, we go under the how to section. Then we have here to configure the virtual desktop load balancer. Now, again, to make life a little bit easier for those of you who are not as familiar with this, I wrote the, the function, but uh, the command itself is not that hard. And it's basically set RDS host pool. You give it the tenant, you give it the host pool, and then you select what type of load balancer you want, depth or breadth, and then what the session limit is. So looking at the function, I've got the same kind of prereqs that are in here, but I'm asking you for the information up front. So do you want depth? Do you want breadth? What's the session limit? And then after that, then we're processing all of that through some if then else statements and making sure that you're already logged on to the appropriate context. All right, so let's first take a look at our host pool. So here's the default setup when you build a brand new host pool. You know, basically you've got 999,999 maximum sessions and it's breath first. Now breath first means that we are going to take all of your session hosts. So you've got four of them. We're going to put somebody on session host number one. Next person who logs in, they go on number two. The number three, number four, then we go back to number one. So we're kind of balancing the load as we go. The other setting is depth first. And depth first means that we will put as many users as are in the maximum session limit on one server. Then once that's full, we'll go to the second session host server. So there's a, a good play to be made for both. And it just depends on which kind of app group you're running, desktops or remote applications, and how thick those applications are, how much horsepower they need to run, size of the VMs, et cetera, as to how much density you can get out of your environment. But this way, you have some control over the load balancing mechanism. So if I run my function that I've created, so I'm selecting my tenant, my host pool, and that's the information I got from up here, and then I'm setting the load balancer type for depth and setting it to four. Now when I run this, because I'm already authenticated, and it tells us here the prerequisite module is already loaded and you're already logged into an RDS context as this user. And now we're beginning the load balancer modifications, setting it for depth first. And then it gives us the report that we are now set for the depth of four. Okay. And then it notes us here at the bottom host pool. This guy has been updated for the session count now four. So now four users we'll log on to system one in this host pool before we'll start loading anybody on system two. All right, and now that we've got this set up, we can just make this whatever we want. So let's just say it's 100. So now we're set up for 100 users, but maybe we don't wanna go with that. Maybe we wanna go with breath instead and let's make it 10. Okay, so just like that, you can change your load balancer config on whatever it is that you need to. And that brings me to this new function and this is where we can set the app group users. So the way that I wrote this with the similar kind of prereqs, but this one has a added object. So we have the RDS module and then logging into the RDS context. And we also have the Azure AD module. So once we have that, then we're executing a very simple script here, which in this case was go get all the Azure AD users where their service principal name matches my domain name, but where it does not match 
my admin domain name. And then once you have gone through this process, then it will then add every one of those users that you have in Azure Active Directory to the remote application group. All right, so the way that that one would work, all right, so we give it the tenant name, the host pool, the remote app group, and the name of the person who has permissions to execute this command. And then when we check and verify what users have access, we can see all of my users have now been added to that remote application group. So if we check our other host pool, all right, so I've cleared out all of the users of this app group in the MSAA tenant, and that's where we were logged in before. So now under here, if we try to open something like calculator, oops, we can't do that. You don't have any access. So if I run my command, so all my modules have already been imported and the process is done. So now if I go back to check the group, see now they're all added. I go back and hit the reconnect button and it asks me for my creds and I hit submit. And there's our calculator. And so I've got my functions that I'll be uploading to my GitHub for you guys to take full advantage of. And let's go back to the docs. So here under the concept section, we're going to look at delegated access. So there are a few different roles that are set up right now in virtual desktop, and that would be the RDS owner, contributor, reader, and operator. And you can see right here what their purposes are. So basically your owner can do anything that they want. Your contributor can change everything except permissions. Your reader can just read and the operator can view the diagnostics. And here are the PowerShell commands that will help us. So if we go to our environment, Okay, and here in PowerShell, we can see the same information. So let's look at a role assignment for my administrator account. Okay, so we have here, my admin account is a member of the tenant group as well as this particular desktops. So how do we then create an assignment? So new RDS role assignment, the name of the role, which we got from up here in the role definitions is operator and they can only view the logs. And I'm giving that to Batman since he's good at technical stuff like that. And then we'll do it for our MSAA tenant and the host pool. And I'm going to do it just for the remote apps group. Okay, so now Batman has that permission. So if we were to now log in as Batman, Okay, so you can see we're logged in as Batman, and if we do a get role assignment for Batman, then we see that within this host pool, within this tenant, we have permissions at this application group to be a RDS operator. Okay, so it's just that simple. So now what can we do with this? So back in our docs, we go under the how to section and then identify issues with diagnostic feature. And then that'll give you a bunch of the diagnostic commands or how to see what's going on. So if we just copy this guy or looking at the detailed activities on this particular tenant, then we're gonna see that this user is not authorized because remember, we gave him permissions just at the app group level. Okay, so he doesn't have tenant permissions. So if we go back to our other tab where we're logged in, we get our RDS context. We're logged in as the WVD admin. So if we run that same command, now we can see a whole bunch of logs. Okay, so you can be very particular in how you give out the rights to view the environment, even at the logging level. And I'm sure over time that we'll take a lot of these PowerShell based experiences and bring them into the portal. So we'll uh, improve the, the user experience as we go. So back in the docs, now we're going to run another command here, and that's to look at things over a specific period of time. So we're going to check our RDS activities on our tenant between the last few days. So here's the output from that for the last couple days worth of activity, but this is a little hard to read, but this is PowerShell, so we've got a lot of options. So let's do a format as table that's auto-sized, and now it becomes a lot more readable. All right, and what if we threw in a sort command? And remember, sorting always comes before you do the formatting. And now we can see that we're sorted by username. And of course you could flip that up and sort by any other parameter that you wanted to. All right, so this has been uh, a look at how to do some management across the WVD environment. We've got a lot of different choices on how to manage our apps, our app pools, user configurations, permissions, and with the help of the PowerShell module that I have up on my GitHub, I think this should get everybody started off in setting up and running and managing your WVD environments. So if you like this video, click on that like button and click on subscribe and hit the notification 
notification bell so that you can be aware of when our videos come out, which is roughly once a week. And give us some comments below about things you're interested in and hang in there for our next video where we're going to start talking about some user profile management. And I've got some pretty exciting things to share with you for the next time. Happy learning.